Okay, I think we're ready, and I think we're live. So we'll just wait for some of the people to start coming in. Otherwise, I'm just going to explain the process along the way. But first, just let me get this up on the right-hand side so I can see the chat. Uh, video resolution is not optimal. That doesn't matter. Okay. So for anyone viewing this video or just tuning in right now, essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mocking up some new features for a client website. This client is Stratus Video. They are a client that we've been working with for quite a while now. And basically they just need updates to their website as needed. We took this over from another company, but really what they need done are like small features along the way or enhancements, design enhancements, because there are a few things that could really be done better um, than what they had previously. So these are some of the designs that we came up with um, for one of their other pages. This is an external resources page meant to list out any of the company's resources uh, that people might need to view when visiting their website. And you can see when we head on over to their actual site, it's going to be Stratus Video. This is what their site currently looks like. So this design isn't terrible, but it can definitely have some improvements made to it. And that's kind of what we've been doing along the way is just improving this website, trying to make this as clean as possible in a design manner that makes sense and makes this usable for anyone visiting the site. So as you can see, we've been developing a few things in XD. Like I said, we've developed the external resources page, but something that they want added to their website is going to be search functionality. So how do we find the exact page that we want to go to uh, in an easy manner and then list out all the pages that might be associated with some sort of search term? So Really, the first thing I do when designing this is I like having the actual website, what it looks like right now, actually paste it into my XD document. So I'll basically just take a screenshot and I'll paste it into my XD document. And that way I just have something to reference and go off of um, to kind of start implementing this feature. Uh, Walter Silva, the audio is only on one side of the headphone. Let me see what I can do really quickly before I continue onto this. Um, Checking out my streaming software, just gonna to go to properties. And it might be on stereo and we might have this set up to only play out of one ear only. So let me go ahead and try to fix this real quick. I think I can do it. Uh, looks like the balance is set up to be directly in the middle on both of these. Just let me know if it keeps playing out of one ear and we'll see what we can do. Might not be able to fix it just this stream. I might have to kind of go into this later. And so I'm not wasting anyone's time in regards to actually getting this playing out of both ears. But it does look like it's in the middle, I want to say, for my Gox 2. Last thing I can do is check over here on my digital audio interface. And it looks like it's in the middle for both of those, but just let me know. And we'll see what we can do along the way. Otherwise, let's just keep on going with this. So let's go ahead and start adding this search design. So. We see this is what things look like right now. All I'm going to do is duplicate this page so I have something that I can work off of um, from previously. And really when we think about this, obviously this header is different and we might develop this header to look like it is right now, but we need to make sure that we're developing things off the header that's currently there because this is really all they ask for is adding the search functionality onto their current site instead of the header that we redesigned for them. So. Where on this would we want to add some sort of search? Well, there are a couple of ways we could do this. We could either add some sort of magnifying glass uh, that when a user clicks the magnifying glass, it opens up some sort of search bar and a user can then search and query whatever they are looking for. Another way to do this is just add a search bar directly. That way they don't have to do any interaction to kind of open up that search bar. They can literally just type into things and then hit enter and then go directly to their search results. So couple of ways we can do it and I think really that's usually the best way is to add some sort of search bar to the top of this and always keep it there and that's definitely the quickest way to get things searchable but in this instance this this header is already kind of filling up with a few things so it probably just makes more sense to add some sort of search bar or some sort of search icon that you click on and then it goes to a separate page and then uh, or we could just like open up some sort of modal which user can search from that. So I think that's what I'm going to do is just add a little, like a little search icon right here. 
that way it doesn't clutter up things too much and then when you click it uh, it has like a little drop down right beneath it in which you can start searching for things and that leads to like a wordpress searchable page result so really the first part of any design is just thinking things out in your head before even touching any design stuff so now that we've thought things out, um, we can either work off of this or we can work off of this. Obviously this is the one that's on the main site, so we're going to work off of this one. Uh, so to start getting icons, there are a couple of ways that you can get these icons for anything that you can think of. My personal favorite way is to just go on over to the website Font Awesome. You've probably heard of it. I see you saying lit over there. <laughs> so funny. Uh, the, best way is to go to Font Awesome. This is just a website that supplies a crap ton of icons that you can kind of tune into and just grab and use in your website. So they have a free version and a pro version. We're just going to stick with the free version for now. And if this client wants to use any of the pro icons, then we can go ahead and download the pro icon set. But we need some sort of search button, some sort of search icon. So we're going to go ahead and type in search. And you'll see that they provide a lot of different search icons, some of these pro, some of these free. We're going to go into the free one, that way we can use it for free, no licensing or anything required. And to get this into an XD document, you need the SVG version. So I believe, yeah, you can just hit this button right here, agree and download the SVG, and it's going to go ahead and give you the SVG for you. Another way you can do this is to just inspect the element, and you'll see that it's already inlined as an SVG. And you can go ahead and just copy this element and then you can actually paste it directly into your XD document. And you'll see now we have a magnifying glass. So this is obviously way too big. We wanna scale this down. And we are just going to put this right next to our support section. And we wanna make this white. And we're just gonna go over here, change the color to white. And now we have a search icon in which the client can basically click on to open up some sort of modal, but obviously the client doesn't know what that modal looks like or that drop down, whatever it is we're trying to do. So really we need to design that next. And there are a couple of things we can do for this. Uh, and I'll tell you kind of steps along the way that I would use to design something like this. So if we want some sort of input field in which a user can input text into, what does the input field look like? Well, it looks a little something like this, just a rectangular box. And typically I like rounding the edges on this box just because it kind of gives off a softer feel. It's not as serious. If you're, use, if you're designing for a client that has like a more legal kind of serious look, um, like a law firm, for example, you'd probably want to keep these corners, the corners of this box uh, straight because straight edges actually give off like that professional, more serious look. But for a client like this, where a lot of the things are uh, usually, I'm pretty sure, yeah, like the buttons are already curved. It's trying to be like more welcoming for people. And this is kind of like, a client that deals with a lot of health related stuff. So you definitely want to make sure that everyone who visits this site feels welcome. And a great way to do that is just through rounding the borders of this box. Um, so we'll just keep on designing this input field. We have a nice box here, and then we want some sort of placeholder text to help indicate that this is indeed something that you can input text into. And so we'll just go ahead and type search. And then to make it a little more clear what we're searching, we'll type search website. And we're going to align this left and make sure that it's completely centered inside of our box, but also that we have a good amount of padding on the left-hand side. We want to make sure that this isn't touching the edge. That just looks sloppy. We need to make sure that people can read exactly what it is we're typing in here without anything overlapping or anything seeming too tight. Now, there are a couple of things that we can do to make this text look even better than it looks right now. Um, really, when you're search, when you have some sort of input text, there's no reason to have it bold by default like it is right now. Any text that you want to put into something like some sort of design, uh, you pretty much just want to make sure that it's regular. Always start with regular and don't use bold unless you absolutely have to, unless it serves some sort of purpose, such as calling out a particular item or something like that. You definitely want to stick, stick with just the regular text to start. So we're going to switch this to regular. You'll see that we have tracking as well. And tracking is basically another word for letter spacing. So how much space is in between each of these letters? That's what this indicates right here. So we're going to change this to zero. And usually you always wanna start off on zero. That's the default amount of spacing for your text. And you'll see that this already is starting to look a lot cleaner than it looked beforehand when we just had that bold, wide spaced text. So always start with just the defaults and things are going to look good usually with just the defaults. So you'll see we have regular, uh, we have zero letter spacing and things are looking good. Now, something to note here 
is that text like this, this is placeholder text, and usually you wanna indicate that you can type into it. So you wanna make sure that this has some sort, you wanna make sure that this is gray because like a light gray indicates that this is something that you can type into and then once you start filling it in, that's when it turns black. That's what indicates that there's actually text there within the input field. Um, so Walter Silva, what's the stack you're going to use? So to develop this, this is a site that was already given to us and really, um, that site was built on WordPress and we took it over and we kind of implemented a little bit of our own stack as well. And all we, all we really did, so this uses like PHP, Apache, um, WordPress, of course, PHP and all that, but we integrated our own Webpack system so we can develop this using uh, JavaScript, Vue, modern language, ES6, anything that we need to really get something up and running in a quick manner. So the stack is WordPress, which means PHP, Apache, Linux, kind of stuff, but uh, we, we did kind of alter this a little bit once we received it to try to make this more scalable as a website. All right, so back to the design. Um, this could really be all you need to start searching a website. So just a magnifying glass, you click it, and then it opens up this little search bar, but we would want to align this at least. So we can move this over here. And one thing to note here is since we're just using an image, designing on top of the image basically. We need to make sure that this image is the correct size uh, so that our text actually matches up with the text on the image. So you'll see this is 14 size font. We're actually going to make this 16. And 16 is just kind of the base font that you use within any website to start off on. So we're gonna make this 16 size font, give the computer a little bit to get rid of the beach ball. Get it slowing down a little bit. Um, but yeah, 16 size font is basically the default for like any body or paragraph fonts. So we're definitely going to make sure that we're using 16 size font for that. Uh, once we have 16 size font, we're going to shrink down this image to make sure that this matches up with this right here, because this is most likely either 16 or 14 size font on the website. We can actually go directly to their website, inspect it, and then see what font they're actually, or what font size they're actually using. So you'll see if we go down, this is actually 12 size font. So we need to make sure that this text right here on the image is actually uh, one to one with 12 size font on the actual XD document. So I'm going to duplicate this and make it a little more apparent color, just something red. And this is going to be default, make it bold for now. We're going to shrink this down to 12. So this text right here needs to equal the size of this text right here. And that way our image will actually be one to one with the text sizes we are using within our XD document. Um, this also uses a different font family. So we wanna make sure that we're using that as well. It looks like it's brand and grotesque, which I believe I have, I do. So this needs to match this and we'll make this uppercase. So really to get this matching, it's pretty easy. Just grab the image. We're just going to shrink it down until this text matches up with that search website text. And that way we know our design is actually one-to-one -one with everything else that's currently on the website. This is a super quick way to start adding stuff on top of uh, a website image that's already there without having to redesign everything because we don't have the original designs for the site and they just need a few features added to it rather than redesigning the whole thing. So you see this is pretty close. You drag it over and we'll say that this is about accurate. So now this is the exact size as we're dealing with on the website, which means everything else that we actually design is going to be relative to that exact size, which is great. So we'll just wanna make sure that this is a little bit smaller to match with the text over here. And then this probably works better as 14 size font for search features, just matches up a little better with the size of the font uh, up here. So if we try moving this to the side, make this directly underneath the search icon, you'll see that it just goes off uh, the actual site, which isn't what we want. So we'll actually align this right instead and now you have to kind of think like what would happen if we click this and we were on a different page and the page background was white. So if we put a white square here, let's just imagine that this is the background of a white page. This is what our search input would look like. And that's obviously an issue because we can't even really tell that this is a search input. So the best thing to do, what I like doing is just putting a shadow here and making a shadow pretty subtle for the most part. Usually the default one is pretty good for XD. As you can see, this is default one right here. And we can really just get away with that. So whenever we click this on a white page, now we're going to see our input 
with a shadow on the background. Um, there's still a few issues here. So now that we have a shadow, it shows on the white, which is good. But another issue we have is like, how does a user actually activate this search? My, in your head, you'd think by default, it's just hitting enter on your keyboard, which is correct. But uh, a more apparent way is to actually add a button here that says search. So if our library has a component button, which it doesn't, we could just use that. But instead, we're going to have to make one, design one real quick. So we want to make sure that this button actually matches the same button we're using on the website. So it's going to have fully curved edges, as you see right there. Curved, curved, perfect. And then we are going to get rid of the border. And we're going to use one of the site's main colors, which is this green. We're just going to inspect it, fill it in. And now we have somewhat of a button going on here. There's no text inside of it. Let's go ahead and add what the button does, which is going to be search. And usually for my buttons, I mean, it can go either way, but uh, for the text, I typically don't like having it all caps. I kind of like it just being lowercase. Um, and this is just kind of all what you really want uh, the kind of feel for your site to give off. It, it's not a big deal which one you do. It's just my personal preference to use lowercase for the actual text. So we're gonna make the button a little bigger to fit the text. I'm going to make it white and now we have a search button. So something that can help the UI, UX, user experience of this whole thing is that the search button should only show when there's actually text here. So there are a few ways to help indicate that to the client. One, you can just design everything out, show everything as is, and then just type an email to the client like, hey, this is how this is supposed to work. You hit this button, start typing stuff in, and then the search button appears, you hit search and it goes to this page. Or you can literally design stuff out completely, the whole process. We can basically duplicate this whole thing, move it to the side, and then we can say like, hey, this is going to be the default state after you click on the magnify glass. And the default state doesn't have anything. But what happens when you start filling things in and this becomes active? Well, you can start searching for different keywords right here. And so what are some keywords we might want to search for? Uh, let's just say like blog posts, for instance. So this has text filled into it. And since you're filling in text, like we're supposed to indicate that text is actually filled in here, this is no longer a placeholder. Someone has inserted text in here. So a good indicator that someone has inserted text into this is that you darken the color of the text. So we've darkened the color and then the search input will appear, which is great because we have text inside of it. And we can do some cool stuff here. We can have this fade in, we can have it translate up, just some small, nice animation features to help this whole thing uh, be a little more intuitive and more intriguing to the user who's using this whole thing. So this is pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and a uh, pretty easy to implement design. This is something that we just send over to the client. It's pretty basic, just a search input, magnifying glass, what it looks like after you type some text in, and then what will the results actually be. So we need some sort of results page, and that's something else that we will have to design. So to think of how results should be displayed, something that you can do is go to a website with some sort of search and then kind of implement some sort of, like just see how the results are displayed and then organize them in a way that makes more sense to you so that a user can find exactly what it is that they are looking for. So this is going to be our search results page right here. And this is something that we've already developed for this client, so we can basically reuse it and it's going to save them time, it's going to save us time. Everyone wins by reusing some of the components that we can basically um, put on different pages without having to redevelop it. So this is actually going to be the search results page. We don't really need a description for this. I mean, it's pretty apparent that search results means these are going to be the results for the page. We can make this a little smaller as well. Just tighten things up. Just because we wanna make sure the users can see the results as soon as possible. But keeping this hero banner here still makes for like a nice little trendy design. So we do wanna keep it in its place, but we wanna make sure this image behind everything is obviously taking up the full screen that we see in the artboard. So we're just going to expand that all the way it's already within something, so we're good to go. But something we may want to do is just move this a little bit to show the most interesting part of the image. So I'm going to make sure that it's showing on his hands and the keyboard. 
and you kind of just want to touch things up make sure things look good whatever preference you have and then we can move this back up as well all right so these are search results and the image kind of works here actually because it looks like this guy is typing and hey some results might be outputted on the page which is great but now we actually want to display these results in a manner that makes sense uh, so as I mentioned there are a couple of ways to do this I, I really like viewing some sites that I admire um, something that displays search results in like a good clean manner so there are a couple of sites that I'll go to uh, I can't really think of any off the top of my head but since we already have some sort of uh, design here we can pretty much take care of our results altogether without having to view much external inspiration so I'm just going to delete everything for now make this a clean slate and we can get rid of all this white space to make sure that we're focused on just this upper section for now get rid of that one we probably don't need any of this text as well we just want to literally just display our results and make sure that they look like there's something that you can click on so we're basically going to move all these links underneath each other and this label this this right here basically acts as a label for what these are but uh really we already have a label up here that says search results it's pretty straightforward so we can just get rid of that too and these are probably like a good amount of white space a good amount of distance from each other to indicate like hey these are all separate things but i'm just going to group them all together and center them and then i'm going to use xd's repeater uh capability which you can just hit command r start dragging down and it pretty much repeats all of the results that we have here but one of the issues is is like this is starting to get hard to it's it's not basically indicative that these are all the same these are all different things because as you saw when we started to expand that it kind of got clumped together and it's hard to really indicate like which links are their own actual link rather than being a grouping of something else so some way to fix that is just give everything more white space and then we can kind of do the exact same thing where we just repeat the nice thing about adobe or uh, xd's repeater is that when you set this up right you can basically uh, change all the padding of each individual item at the same time so we're just going to go ahead and use this one we're going to center it use that repeater field Oop, that's a lot <laughs> you'll see that I have an item down here that's actually blocking things going to delete that all right so basically how do we get these separated from each other enough to the point where they look like there's something different and we're just going to extend the padding for all of them and it's starting to look a little better but ideally we'd want this all to be different text for some sort of uh, to help indicate to the client like hey these are all different links things that have been searched for but this is kind of like a good place to start. I would say it's probably better if we do this exact same thing using one of the longer titles just because they fill up the whole screen. So that's actually what we're going to do. Make sure that thing at the bottom is deleted. And then we're just going to use this large one. As our main text. So we're just going to drag that down, start extending things until we have a good amount of separation so we as a user can view this and say hey these are all definitely different links that a user can go to so we don't want this to be like a search result that ends that just goes on forever and ever like let's imagine that we are loading like 50 items that's going to be a pretty slow load time to display everything at once on the screen so something that a lot of people do that's pretty typical is they have some sort of pagination at the bottom so you can basically travel between your results. Uh, how many results are there? You can view how many results are there. So let's say there are like 50 pages of results. You just show the numbers at the bottom. Hey, this goes one through 50. So that's what we're going to design next. Let's say here there are like five pages of results. So to start indicating that there are results, we're just going to start typing out numbers at the bottom. And we obviously want to make sure that these numbers have some sort of dark color so we can see them. So we'll say one, two, three let's actually say that there are probably six results on this four uh, 
we can go ahead and get away with just there being five results. So we have five results, but how do we indicate what page we are actually on? Uh, you may think like bolding this is probably a good idea, which is definitely doable. But the thing I like doing to help indicate that something is selected is actually changing the other elements colors. So to help emphasize one thing, you have to de-emphasize the other things. And to de-emphasize other things, you literally just change their color to a lighter shade of gray. So we start changing this to something like 700 instead of the 900 that this one is. You'll see that, hey, the one is definitely selected and compared to the two, three, four, and five. And there are ways to make this a little more indicative that something is selected. And a good way to do that is to give this a background color. Um, probably wouldn't use a circle. I'm actually going to use a rounded square for this. So four, put this in the background, make sure that this is all centered. That looks about right, I wanna say. It's probably better if we just leave this where it was. Yeah, and then try to center the square directly for where the one is. And that looks not too bad, but this obviously doesn't look great. So what are some ways we can do this? I don't really like using borders, honestly, to help emphasize something. I really just like changing the background color. So I take the border off and then I choose the lightest shade gray I have or maybe a little lighter. If it's hard to read right here, I'll definitely make it like a little or a little darker than what it is, just so it looks a little more uh, indicative that something is selected. And this one actually contrasts pretty hard within this gray background. So something you can do is turn the contrast down so it's still bigger than this over here. Or you can start using a brand color to help something is, help indicate that something is selected. So brand color is this blue text right here. And now that's starting to look little more interesting than what we had before. And I would even go ahead a little further and say, let's de-emphasize these a little more just to show that this is the thing that's definitely selected. So now we have some pagination in place, which is great because if we click one of these icons, we can now go to one of the other pages of results that we have at hand. Obviously these will all be different things. This is going to be the search results page with more than, uh, let's just say four pages with more than one page of results. Okay, so we have a question from my good friend Khadija, who's actually here with us, aka here with me right now. Uh, she asks, what if the client wants to see a snippet of text beneath each item and for the search term to be highlighted in each result? That is a great question, Khadija, and that's definitely a good way to improve this design overall. So this is probably like the most bare bones design we have. Just listing everything out, which is the title, is pretty simple to develop. You click it, it goes to that page, uh, whatever, whatever you need to do. So if you need something that needs to be done quickly, just start with this. But if the client requires like more information to help make these search results more useful, a couple of things that we can do here. So we're actually going to display the date. And then as she mentioned, how do we actually highlight each result? Well, we can display that too as well for this design. So let's start off with the date. First thing I'm going to do is actually take away this repeater field that XD provides. And then we can do a few things like such as when was this last updated? Um, so to indicate that there's some sort of extra information here, what I like doing is I like using 14 size font. Um, that's one basically one step below the 16 size font, which I call the base font. And just going down to that 14 size font is typically like what I use for any metadata. It just helps indicate like, hey, this isn't as important as the base font or whatever it is uh, above the main frame, or above the main header. Um, so I'll go down to 14 size font and then I'll start typing out the information that I want to display. So we can say last updated on and then instead of using something like uh, colon, we're just going to display this out directly. There's no need for a colon here because we can just write it out. If you can just write it out, that's usually better than just adding a colon. We, I tend to stay away from labels as much as possible just because it clutters up your design so much compared to if you were to use colons or labels in general. So we're going to say last updated on, and we'll say the date is January 17th, 2019. And obviously, what's the main issue here between this text and this text? It's the same color. It's hard to tell that this is something different than this text, even though it is smaller. But we need some way to really differentiate that this is this is definitely different than the text we have above it. So a few things we can do here. We already made this smaller. We can make this regular text. I recommend using regular text for anything that doesn't need to be super important. That's kind of acts as like secondary information. So we're going to make this regular. And really what I like doing is 
de-emphasizing this with some sort of gray. So if we change this to gray, we're doing two things. We're de-emphasizing the text and we're also making sure that it contrasts from the title, which is exactly what we want. We want that extra meta information to be separate from what you're actually seeing on the title right here. So we make that a little gray. We have some sort of meta information here. Um, and it's, it's a lot, it's, it's just information that we can take to help make these results more interesting and more informative to the viewer, whoever is searching for something. So now when we do a repeater field, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to extend our results all the way down to the bottom here. And we kind of have to look at this and say, okay, what is, is this, is this definitely separated from each other enough to the point where it is easily consumable to the viewer? And I would say it's close, but we want to add just like a little more white space in here just to make sure that these are, the user knows like these are definitely separate items from each other. We don't want to make the user work when viewing designs like this. We want to make sure that the design is in place and they have to do as little work as possible with their eyes. All right, so that's looking a lot better as well. Uh, so something else we can do here is help indicate to the user what it is they're searching for. And to do that, we would want some sort of label at the top of this that said search results for X, Y, Z. So we have search results up here, which is nice, um, but we could probably uh, duplicate this just for now. We're gonna do a few things here to make sure that we know exactly what term we're looking for. So let's go ahead and make this a darker color. And this is a label. And when you're putting a label in a design, you pretty much never want it to be the main thing that stands out. You usually always wanna make it smaller than the text. And this is like a huge issue I see a lot of beginner designers have is they usually make the label the biggest thing on the page, even though it's probably the least important. The most important things on the page are the actual results. So for labels, I like making things usually like around 16, 14 size pixels. Usually I'm always bouncing between 12, 14, and 16 pixels um, of sizing for my fonts just because those are uh, different enough from each other, but they're also small enough to help de-emphasize things when you want to focus on other pieces of content. So we're going to make things 14 size font, and we're actually going to mimic what we had in one of the other designs. So really what we can do is we can use this label, take it on over here. We're gonna get rid of search results there, but we're just going to replace this text with search results. Pretty nice, because we have all the same styling in place as that same label, which we can reuse when actually developing this. And we're going to say showing search results for, and then we can actually type out our query. So we're going to say, was our query over here, blog posts. And in between this, we don't want the actual results to be all uppercase. We wanna type exactly what the user was typing. So we're going to say blog posts with just an uppercase B. And the reason this is showing uppercase is just because we have a setting on XD that says make everything in this uppercase. Just need to select this text. All right, let's see if we can do it. Deselect. And it looks like it doesn't want to let me make everything not uppercase. So I'm just going to create a new text item, turn caps lock off. And then we're just going to say blog post. Yep, so blog post right here. And we're going to put this in apostrophe, is this quotations, sorry. I'm going to put this in quotations just to show, help indicate this is what it is we're searching for. And we don't really, I would say, hmm, I probably want to make this the main thing that's emphasized. And so I'm going to keep this bold actually. And I'm going to change the color to something that indicates this is actually what we're trying to look for. Um, this should probably be the darkest thing compared to this. So we're going to try a few colors. We can try a few brand colors. Just try to find something that definitely stands out. This is probably too close to actual colors right here for my liking. I probably like the gray a little better. Uh, but this is still competing with this for attention, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, so even though we're reusing a label, uh, now that we're looking at it, it's just not that intuitive compared to what we had um, before. So it's not intuitive basically as just doing something lowercase. 
So we want to make sure that this is the main point of emphasis compared to this. And a, a great way to make sure that this is the main point of emphasis is to make sure that this is lowercase. So we're making everything smaller, which in return makes this lower emphasis. Um, we can also make sure that this letter spacing has gone away and that this isn't bold anymore. Remember, if you ever want to make things less emphasized, definitely get away from uppercase. Um, make sure that things are lowercase and that they are regular sized font. So this is already looking a lot better than what we had before. We have grayish search result text and then what we're actually looking for, which is right here. And I don't like things being like too dark just because it really, users like a little bit amount of contrast, but uh, when things contrast too much, it just kind of throws off the overall look of things. And I, I know like a lot of people aren't big fans of that. So I typically try to stick around like an 800, 700 shade of gray for uh, things like this. Uh, it still looks a little off. And I think the main thing is, is that there's just letter spacing. Usually I only use letter spacing for like all uppercase text because once you make everything uppercase, um, you need a little bit of extra spacing to make sure that the, the text is easier to read compared to what you have with lowercase and uppercase characters. So if we make this have zero letter spacing, things are already looking a lot better. We know what we're searching for. Uh, we could probably do the same thing for up here saying like search results showing results for blog posts but i think just keeping this as like the hero banner as something interesting on the page and then including this as well is helpful uh so basically if we want to help indicate like khadijah said that certain items are being searched for let's say that this title actually has some sort of title uh some sort of word that has blog or post inside of it uh so what we can do here is we can go get some lorem ipsum. And we're going to copy it into that text that we had. I don't think this is a great site to grab it, so I'm going to go to this one. And this is exactly what we need. So I'm just going to grab a couple characters, go back into the dock, replace this. I'm going to make sure that this is the correct size. I'm just going to drag this down. Perfect. And then inside of this lorem ipsum text, let's just say blog post or blog post. So how do we help indicate that certain things are selected? Um, so we already have everything bold, blue, everything kind of sticking out. Make sure that these are indicated that they are clickable and that there are links to new pages. So instead of dealing with anything typography wise, what we're going to do is add in a background. And I really like adding in background stuff instead of like borders for these elements to help indicate that something's selected. And the way I do that is the same way I do it for our pagination down here. And so I'll just create a rectangle and give it a gray background to start. Pretty much always start with that gray background. I just wanna make sure that this is the only thing that is highlighted and then we can see what that looks like and edit things as necessary so blog and post were both found and that honestly doesn't look too bad we probably want to highlight this a little more i'm going to send this to the back real quick and then lock it so it's not in our way all right so if we darken this a little more, now it's even more indicative that these are the things that we search for. doesn't look that great though. We probably want some sort of color on this, I would assume. Uh, we can try some blues on this as well. We might need to kind of play around with this a bit until we get something that we like. And you don't have to stick with just the colors over here. These colors are directly from Tailwind CSS. That just gives you a nice color palette um, that you can essentially uh, I pretty much always use this color palette um, when designing stuff just because it gives you a limited amount of characters to choose from, but you don't have to stick to it. Sometimes you can just go over here and make sure that you're getting that exact look you want, which I do from time to time. And I think this light blue looks good on top of the other blue. So we're going to keep that. And then I'm going to round the edges, keep this the consistency across the site with everything. And I think that is a good starting point. So search for blog post, maybe even lighten this up a little bit. I think it's a little too emphasized. Lighten it up, you can just change the opacity over here. And I would say that's a good start. So search for blog post, they show right here. And then you can paginate or go between the different pages to essentially uh, 
get any more results that you had. Uh, Lenny, thanks for the tutorials, fam. No problem, man. I'm definitely always want to be more consistent than I am, but it's probably the hardest thing for me. But yeah, man, appreciate it. I'm going to have more coming, and hopefully this acts as a tutorial itself for people interested in design. All right, so we have the search results, but we're not really done just yet. Uh, what happens when we search for something and it doesn't exist? We haven't really thought of that yet. Um, one thing quickly, Kadisha, do you know if the... That right there. Okay, do you want to swap it out yeah, with that one? <laughs> okay, and you can charge the battery um, originally in the camera thing. Okay, so camera's coming back on. Yeah, it's coming back on, don't worry. Battery died in the DSLR, um, which I've been using to record this. I definitely need to find like a power source that I can just put it into at all times, but this being the first stream, uh, I kind of expect some technical problems. So. Let's get back to design while Khadija is going to help fix the camera. Basically, when we search for something, obviously we have the results shown, but what happens if there are no results? What do we show? You can't just show a blank page because if we just show a blank page, this is what it's going to look like. We need some sort of indicator that there are no results. So we're saying showing search results for blog posts. Um, we could add some text underneath that says no search results found. But this is kind of duplicative compared to what we had before. We don't want both of these on the same uh, page just because it's, we're repeating ourselves. We can basically just get rid of this. Say right here, no search results found. And then we can do a couple things. We can prompt the user to search again by including that input field right here. And we can also uh, add some sort of icon here to make this a little more interesting than what we have already. Uh, so looking over at the chat, why is every developer I know using Mac? Um, so personally, I've used both Windows and Mac, and both are definitely doable. Uh, you don't have to really use one or the other, but I definitely prefer Mac, uh, just because it seems to be like a little more stable with terminal stuff. I really just like their command shell um, compared to PowerShell on Windows and some of the stuff they have. It just seems a little more stable to do certain commands and install NPM modules, which is why I use it. And they also have just a few packages and a few applications that I like, such as like Spectacle, which allows you to resize everything, as you can see right here, really quickly. It just has like a little few development things that I really like overall compared to Windows, which is why I use it. Obviously, it's more expensive, which just sucks, but um, uh, eventually, when you start working professionally, you can kind of save up some money to get whichever one you prefer. It doesn't really matter. You can definitely develop with either. So search results, no search results found. We want some sort of interesting icon that helps show that there are no results. And so to find icons, just free images that you can use on the web, what I like doing is I actually go to, I forget what the exact site is called. I know it's available. I know it shows on this documentation for Tailwind CSS under resources. There is a icon library called Undraw. And it's just this, I think it's just like this one woman who draws all these icons and just made them for free. So it's really great. And I really appreciate her. So if we look at the illustrations, you'll see there are going to be things for pretty much everything that you can use within any of your designs, which is really awesome. Um, so we need something to help show search results. We're going to use a search feature right here and just say no results, see what we can find. And this is like, we can use this as an example of what we want to do. And I'm pretty sure this is an icon that we could use for a search results, no search results found page. So if we type in clipboard, I guess we're not going to get anything. We'll just keep on looking for results. Uh, it doesn't look like we're finding anything. We can just go through the illustrations and try to find something that indicates there aren't any results. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Camera's back up. Peace signs in the air. I don't know if it's, yeah, it's a little behind on my side, but you guys will get to me catching up. Um, okay. So we want to show that there aren't any results. We're just going to keep looking for something that helps indicate that. I don't really want any people in here. I don't really think we need that. But uh, a unicorn probably fit pretty well, I think. Uh, let's see what we got. Just going to keep on going until we find an icon that indicates we don't have any results. And I want to make sure the search works. So I'm just going to go over here, type insert. 
Okay, good. Let's see if we can find anything we're not found. Yes, okay, perfect. So we have a couple of things that we can show here, but we wanna choose the one that's closest to the brand of Stratus Video. So we're looking here. Um, this one might work. This is just pretty generic. Looks kind of professional of there being no content, something that's empty. I wouldn't really say anything. I would say like probably the best two choices for this are going to be this one or this one. I kind of like this one better. Um, just because it's a little more interesting than this clipboard. Obviously, I like this one the best because there's a little ghost going up. But uh, I'm going to have to go with this one for the client. So I'm going to download the SVG. And then I'm going to drag it on into this XD. Dragging it into this XD document will basically copy it. But now we can have this nice icon within our page. We don't have to design this ourselves. It's SVG, which means it's super scalable. And we can put it in our no search results found page. So we're gonna select that. And the client may like this or not, um, but just in case they don't, I'm also going to add this clipboard in there for a different version. And that way they can check out both and see which one it is they like best. So let's add this in there. I'm gonna drag that clipboard in there from my other screen. And now they have two options to choose from for no results. So cool. And if you wanna make this like closer to the client's brand, uh, you can actually edit this directly. This is all SVG. So you can actually change these colors for the purple. It's obviously not a, the Stratus brand, which is like blue and green, but you can select all these. Then we're gonna zoom in on the logo. Uh, probably not the logo. We're gonna go over to the button use the eyedropper to select the green, and then we can go back over here, say, hey, now we have green clipboards compared to the purple ones that we had before. We can do the same thing for this. This one might be a little harder because there are a lot of different shades, but we're still gonna do it anyways. So let's select all of the transparent items. We're going to fill this in with green instead. It's already a 10% opacity, so we're looking good here. We're just gonna do the same thing for all the items. We're just gonna make all the purple green to make sure that it matches up with the brand colors of Stratus and crap. I didn't mean to select that. Unselect, go back to the green. Really what we could do is select this green and make it a color over here. So we'll do that next, make it a color. And it looks like I missed a couple. Let's go ahead and get those guys. So green, 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 green. Not, that's not green. <laughs> green. All right, I gotta find out a way to get this guy. Cause this keeps showing us purple. I might've pasted this twice, which is why it's not working. Okay, there we go. I think I did paste it twice by accident. All right. It might just be a different color. I think on top, get that out of the way. All right, so what's happening here is they overlaid another purple on top of this to kind of give it that shade effect. So I'm gonna to try to select uh, this guy all together and then just make everything green on it. I'm gonna ungroup everything, lock just the background so I can go ahead and hover. And uh, I'm probably gonna to have to ungroup this guy too. Ungroup everything. That's a shadow. Let's see what we can do here. It was just brought to my attention that you can select the color and undraw. <laughs> okay, I was told by Khadija, who is very handy. She's smarter than I am. JK. But not really. <laughs> you can select the color. So we're going to go ahead and select the color. This is way easier than changing it yourself. For small things, you can definitely change it yourself. But instead, we're going to go ahead and just change the color directly. And now we have a nice color changer, color changed icon here. So let's get rid of this guy and use the green one instead. I hear you, Josh. Yeah, I'm on live stream if you wanna be on it. You wanna say hi? My roommate's here. He's gonna say hi to everyone. Hi guys. <laughs> oh, he's so professional. <laughs> uh, all right, question. Um, Harris Ahmed, I see. Thanks for the explanation. Always been a Windows guy, but while I'm watching tutorials, I love 
Mac OS font rendering. Yeah, I'm totally with you. Uh, with the retina displays and everything like that, it just, everything just looks super clean and crisp on the Mac displays. I definitely like it a lot. Obviously, the downside is the price, which sucks, but yeah, sometimes you have to deal with it. Uh, so something that I was just messing around with was when I pasted this guy. I actually pasted it on top of the search results. And I kind of like that. Uh, it kind of just makes things look a little more interesting. So I'm actually going to integrate this text directly into the icon. And I'm going to have this text overlaid on top of the actual image. Um, so I think that looks pretty good, but I probably want to make this like the same shade of green so it fits in a little better than what we have here. We do something like this. I might even go like a little darker, try to get a darker shade. Just to make it stand out a little more. I really like how that looks. Um, I think it kind of like competes with this a little bit, what we have up there with the hero banner. And maybe we could even like just get rid of this hero banner altogether. We'll do a few options. Just have this page say no results found. So basically, if there are no results, it just shows this instead of the banner, which I kind of like a little better. Uh, we can show the client both, see what they like. It doesn't really matter. But I like the cleanliness of this. Um, I might even make this a little bigger just because we got rid of that, make it stand out a little more. Lock it in place, grab the text, send it to front. Can make this bigger too. Really make sure that people aren't missing the no results found. All right. So here's the deal. We're going to make sure that both of these are centered completely. So we got to unlock them, group them together, center them. And then we can have that input field that we had over here. We're just going to copy this and we're going to place it over here. We can just place it right beneath everything or just move it around until we find a spot that we really like. And I might actually overlay it on top of everything again, just because I really like that aesthetic that's kind of bringing out. It's a little more interesting than just putting at the bottom, um, breaking into breaking out of like the standard workflow of the box of like everything must be centered or in a grid. It's just, uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. I kind of like doing this stuff where you break out of it just because it makes things look so much more interesting than they would have looked beforehand. Um, so we're just going to keep this over here and then I want that placeholder text instead of that main text. I'm going to leave the search button in for this that just to help indicate that everything is searchable. And I want to make sure this is the same kind of text that I used in the placeholder. So a cool way to do this in XD is just to select your text, add it as a character style. And now we can basically make this text the exact same character styles we had over there. So we select this. We have that character style and then we can center it. And now this is looking like a much better not found page compared to what we had before. Really basically making the site more modern than it was. Um, I, ideally there would be a footer in here, but since we don't really have that, now we can just send this as is and say, hey, we want to add a footer in and everything will be good. But I really like how this is turning out. Might make this um, background shadow a little lighter just because it's kind of really jutting out there. You can even go ahead and select the color and make the, sh make the shadow like some sort of shade of the actual color, main like primary color that you're using on your website. Uh, it doesn't always work. Kind of have to play around with it a little bit. Usually go like a little darker than the actual color. And that's kind of blending in a lot better than what we had beforehand. Just play with the opacity to get something that you like. <laughs> Okay, so I like the way that looks, but we're going to give them another um, kind of page over here. Help show that no results are found. This is going to be like more of the basic kind of page rather than something unique like we had over here. So we are going to duplicate this. That way we don't have to repeat ourselves. And it's just going to be pretty simple. No results found. We're going to include this. And now someone can search the website uh, if they would like. And we're going to make this a darker black because that's what we had previously. And it doesn't really work with the green here because there's no green background. And then we can make this smaller for the same reason. We don't have a footer in here designed just yet. But we want to just send the most important parts to the client. 
<coughs> so I would say these are, this is a pretty good design to send over. This is going to be search results, no results found, number one. And then this is going to be search results, no results found, number two. And then we can basically send all these. If the client finds something, then this is what's going to show. And this is going to be the main option to search for stuff. And basically when we're ready, um, let's say like the client approves this, we can send this out to other developers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new link over here, hit the share button, go to share new link, title is his Stratus because that's the client name. And then we wanna make sure that this is sendable to developers. Um, so we're just going to select that development setting, hit create new link. It's going to be a second. Uh, while that loads, let me go ahead and answer questions. So Harris, Chris, how important are the skills of algorithmic analysis and data structures, which are taught to CS graduates for being a JavaScript front or a backend developer? I would say it really depends on what kind of work you're doing. But if you're just doing like the majority of, if you're doing like marketing agency work where like you're working on marketing sites or you're working on an app and you're kind of just working on like front end or like basic back end features, you don't really need to know either of those. Um, like you can get away with just knowing like CSS, HTML, and still be a paid professional web developer. You really don't need to know like the whole ag algorithmic analysis and data structure stuff at all. I rarely ever use it. Uh, then again, I'm not really the one who's going into the backend systems and developing those complex algorithms that people need for certain apps to work in complex ways. So, um, I mean, it has its uses depending on what you're doing, but it's definitely not a requirement to get started in web development and to be good at web development either. So now that this is finished, we have a link that we can visit now. We can just copy it and go to our browser. And you'll see that this link is something that we can send to our developers. We can send it to the client as well. And they can basically go through our designs and make comments on everything as necessary, say what they want changed, say test comment, hit submit. We're gonna continue as a guest. My name's Chris, continue. So we have a test comment. We can even test pin comments to say exactly what we want changed. We're gonna pin this right here Hit submit. And now a client can basically like select what it is exactly that they want changed, make a comment. We don't even really need to discuss this, can basically just send this over. They have their comments, we send it back and then be good to go. And then if a developer wants to develop this, you just hit this button right here. And now we have everything that a developer needs to get going on this. We have an assets panel, which they can download like the background, the logo, whatever. And then they have all the colors that are used within this, the font sizes, and they can even select stuff and copy the CSS and just paste it into whatever it is they want. So I'd say this design is uh, complete for now. I'm actually going to update the share link to only show exactly what it is we just designed. And to do that, we want to disconnect these guys, which they already disconnected. We just want to make sure that we're selecting um, only the exact ones we want to send over. So this button right here is a home button. This means that this is definitely one we want to send over. And then you have to connect the artboards together to say everything connected to the homepage is all we want to send over. Once you do that and you go to share, you'll see everything else is grayed out, which means these are the only ones we're going to share with the client. So we hit update link. We're going to give it a second. And now when we visit that same link, we're only going to see those exact three artboards compared to what we had before. So one, two, three, perfect. Send this off the client, should be good to go. So that's going to be uh, the design portion of this live stream and going to take a quick one to two minute break. And then we're going to do reviewing a beginner developer's code for another client. And then we're going to refactor it professionally. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I would refactor it, how I do things to make sure that this is the exact code we want. And that this is something that we can definitely send off to the client. So I'll see you guys in about, uh, actually probably like five, 10 minutes, but yeah, so far so good. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon, bye.